you kept me out of jail. And I go, what do you mean? They thought you also might be a cop trying to organize a sting operation. And the co-driver said, we got nailed by the cops, he's going to jail. What's up, people? Well, today I want to tell you an interesting story because I kept a young man from going to jail. And that involves driving and, frankly, just an opportunity where I saw something happening uh, through a tip from somebody else with someone who wasn't doing anything crazy, wasn't doing illicit, wasn't trying to be a bad guy, but his life choices were going a direction that just didn't make sense. So I did, in fact, step in and have a talk to this person. And, oh, stop, turn off the copyrighted malarkey. <laughs> Excuse me. So, headed home here. So obviously cars are a lot of fun, sports cars, motorcycles, race cars, etc. And one of the most fun things about fast cars is going fast. And the thing about going fast is, it's generally illegal everywhere in the country to go fast on a roadway. Now, truth be told, everybody speeds, okay? Especially people with sports cars. But the reason why that's okay, generally speaking, is because people have good enough sense to do it where you're far away from others and you're not endangering property, etc. And generally speaking, people, especially with sports cars or nice ones, are smart enough to realize, hey, if I'm around congested areas, traffic or a city, etc., why don't I completely behave? I'm being totally honest with y'all and that's the way it is. <laughs> but there are things where people take it too far and one of those, which is arguably whether it's too far or not, is the event called the Cannonball Run or more specifically, people making record runs from the East Coast to the West Coast to see how fast that can be done. Now, first of all, that's something as a car guy I really like, I kind of admire it, I think it's awesome, and it's cool, and it strums the chord of the rebelliousness in all Americans, I think. Now, especially going back to the history of the Cannonball Run in the 70s or even the 80s, uh, there was a lot more going on than just dudes wanting to drive real fast. There was also a protest for the 55 mile an hour speed limits back in the Carter days where they were trying to save fuel by driving slower, but it was just ridiculous. And that went so far in pop culture as even Sammy Hagar singing the song, I Can't Drive 55, which was a big hit in the 1980s, and the music video with his Ferrari 512 barrel and a boxer. And even going beyond that with Cannonball Run inspired a few movies, the first of which is a fun favorite of mine where the opening scene is a black, can a black Lamborghini Countach completely messing with the cops. And it basically has all the big stars at the time from Dean Martin to Sammy Davis Jr. had Roger Moore, Burt Reynolds in it, and it was a lot of fun. And I think basically all the stars were just drunk all the time during filming and just had a great time. But anyway, the thing about Cannonball Run nowadays is, even though it's still exciting, it's still underground, it's still cool, and it seems they have a really good safety record, it's illegal. And the speeds with which that you have to do nowadays to actually make it happen are very illegal. And you compound that with the fact that you have to do it across the entire country in a span where you're not sleeping, um, starts compounding areas for you to have problems, to get in an accident, to get nailed by the cops, uh, mechanical breakdowns, etc. So there's risk associated naturally. Now everybody who's done it, and especially done it successfully, has planned it out very, very well in terms of when to go, so there's less traffic, less police, law enforcement, etc. had the right cars to do it safely uh, and did it safely. But people are still wanting to do it. Now, I'm not going to go into, is there value to society to still doing something like that? I think there is some, and I think it's important in the world for people to be rebellious on purpose and in a, shall we say, structured way from time to time to make sure life and civilization still keeps it real. So, on to the story. Now, there's a young person I know. Uh, I know he likes cars, I know he likes Cannonball. He had mentioned to me once he wanted to set some kind of little record. Uh, didn't really think much about him, but I may have reminded him, you know, that's illegal, right? And so that was that. 
Sometime later, I got a phone call from Ed Bolian from Vinwicky, of course, which is a past Cannonball Run record holder. Uh, he did it very well, and you know, rest his laurels on that. And obviously, has Vinwicky with all the storytellers and connected with all the other Cannonballers. And he says, calls me up, and he says, "Hey, do you know somebody named?" And I'm just going to say John Doe. <laughs> And I go, yeah, I know John, but how do you know I know him? And he goes, well. And Ed proceeds to tell me that this young person, was rather tenacious, I gotta admire the spirit, had reached out to all of the previous Cannonball record holders and all of the serious Cannonball people because he was thinking he wanted to organize an event, an unlimited event for everybody. Uh, And was doing it in such a way by reaching out to people's public uh, email addresses or DMs on Instagrams and things like that, that the Cannonballers noticed it because there was enough professionalism there, but started going, something's not right here. Like, is this a cop trying to do a sting or something like that? So Ed mentioned to me, and I talked about it, and I said I didn't know about it, uh, but obviously believe him, and that this person was planning on doing an unlimited run from the East Coast to the West Coast, timed and all that, to try to set a new Cannonball record. And Ed said to me, I would aggressively encourage you to convince him to stop. <laughs> now, I don't remember if that was exactly Ed's words, but that was exactly the sentiment, which I completely agreed with. Because if one chooses to do something like a cannonball run, you have made a big decision for your life. You're going to be known for that. And that could get in your way of employment possibilities. Uh, as well as just making it to where people think of you a certain way. They brand you more, being a bit more of, frankly, an outlaw, at the very least. At the very worst, bad things can happen. So, I was thinking about it, and I realized with any tenacious young person that has the gusto enough to pull off something like this or plan to do it, it's not going to be easy to convince them otherwise. So I had the opportunity to be in a car ride all day with this person, And so I I brought it up. I said, you mentioned you want to do a cannonball before. Tell me about what your plans are. What what were you thinking of doing with that? He told me. I go, okay. And I said, how are you planning on doing this or organizing all these people? He told me that. And I said, okay, I want to play straight with you. Ed called me and told me about that. And I heard about it. Let me ask you something, I said. I said, okay, given who you are, and your background and experience and all, and it was frankly rather low at this time in this person's life, he, uh, I said to him, I said, what do you think these, all these cannonballers are gonna think about you trying to organize this? What are they gonna think about you? And he thought for a second and he goes, that I have no idea what I'm doing, I have no experience, and who the hell am I for thinking this? And I said, you're not wrong, uh, and they thought you also might be a cop trying to organize a sting operation. And he's like, ha. Huh. I said, okay, let's talk about you trying to make a cannonball run. And I said, here's the question, why? So I said that to him, and he said, why? He's like, well, I want to set the record, and I want to do this, and I said, okay, 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 no, 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 no. I said, let me be more specific. What tangibly are you going to gain from doing this? Do you have a way to monetize it? Are you going to have a profit margin? Are you going to use this notoriety to sell something? Do you have some sort of publicity plan aligned for this? What do you got going on? What's the value in doing this? And he had nothing. And I said, okay, I get that this is a neat thing to think about. I get this is a neat thing for all the people who have done it, and it's pretty cool and gives you a lot of street cred and count, clout, and also it's something you could really feel accomplished doing. But the amount of risk you are putting yourself in, both legally and physically, damage to yourself, property, others, and your future is incredibly large. And you are doing this for no tangible gain. Yes, he said. I said, I want you to think about just that. That's truly insane. And I said, you know, I realize it takes skill to build a car, to plan this, to do everything. But 
there are other outlets that you can take all of the same skill, gusto, gumption, uh, really going for it where you got to be precise and plan, where people will care, that is in fact legal. And I would just like to say that I think you need to consider it because you're going to do something that has the potential to ruin your life and others. And you're doing it for no reason, not to make any social statement, political statement, nothing like that. There's no intangible thing for you to gain. And you have no tangible gain to come from it. So we talked about it and he got it. And he thought about it for a while. And he decided to back out on his own. I can't tell him to, but presenting it in such a way made it real. And I told him, I said, I will help you find a way to apply all of the best qualities of you for wanting to do this in something automotive that will matter for you for the future and be good. But I would love it if you would consider not doing cannonball stuff. Leave that to the guys who feel it's the right time in life for them to do that and have something to gain for themselves or others from doing it don't think you're the right person to do this. So he decided not to. And some time goes by, and I forgot all about it, but I, you know, I, I felt good. Uh, not like hugely good, like, oh, I'm so cool, I stopped this person. From- no, I just, I just felt good because um, it was nice to have a community of people who get things that can help others find or find the perspective to make good choices. So anyway, a bunch of time goes by, I didn't think anything of it, and I ran into this person again. I came up to him and said, hey, and he goes, okay, so I'm just going to put this out there. You kept me out of jail. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, the people that I was going to do the run with made the run. And he said he was scheduled to drive through, I don't know, like Indiana, Illinois, through uh, Missouri and uh, whatnot. And he said he was following the run via GPS or whatnot. And um, as they went through Missouri, they stopped. So he messaged the co-driver. And the co-driver said, we got nailed by the cops. He's going to jail. And this is not a direct thing. That driver at that time would have been the person I knew. And he would have gone to jail for no reason at all. The only reason, because he wanted to do something cool. That's not a good enough reason. Anyway, he thanked me, and I smiled, teased him a little bit, made a few jokes about boyfriends and soaps and dropping them and things like that. Um, And I said, I don't know, maybe you would have made yourself a nice cuddle buddy. You know, and that kind of thing. And he got a good smile out of it. But the gravity of the situation really mattered. And it was a a life-altering thing for him. It was a huge moment. Um, And I was just glad that went that way. Uh, But maybe more so than that, I was glad that uh, I, and vicariously as well, Ed Bolian was able, we were both able to be in a way mentors to this person Um, and recognize something going on and showcase that he should reconsider. So that's really only the moral of the story, guys. And I know there's going to be some people comment, well, oh, so Casey's way of keeping people out of jail is just tell them don't do illegal things. (laughs) I'm like, yeah, that's my advice. And if you are, uh, do it for a really good reason. (laughs) Not a really good bad reason, okay? That's all. Um, Hey, we all like to do things. We all like to have fun. We all like to stretch things now and then have fun with our cars. But guys, really think things through and the gravity of it. Because just because something is glamorous and exciting and noteworthy and maybe you become a kind of an underground outlaw hero doesn't mean that something isn't illegal. Doesn't mean that maybe you should consider finding another outlet for your your uh, drive, shall we say, because uh, all we all want to enjoy this together. And I do have to point out for prospective cannonballers, if you are going to do that, do it right and uh, know when to punch out for good reasons. Don't ever push a bad hand. 
uh, because, hey, it's all of our responsibilities together as automotive enthusiasts to make sure that we do things in a way and we enjoy things in a way, even if we're stretching something a little bit so that we don't ruin it for everybody. Because I think we all know that miserable pile of garbage politicians like to have some stupid example to ruin everything for everybody. Yes. Anyway, use that. That's what we should do. Use your drive and squelch crappy politicians. Yes. And we'll enjoy our cars forevermore, whether they're electric, gas powered or whatever. We'll have fun. And, uh, you know, this is America. But, uh, guys, make good decisions. I hope that you'll share this for other young people. Please subscribe, hit that bell, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Sing V12, but not so much that it'll get me in trouble. Go! <laughs> All right, guys. See ya. Well, huge thank you to Crush Proof Tubing Company. Since 1949 in Macomb, Ohio, they've been manufacturing custom rubber and plastic tubes for every industry imaginable. No tooling or mold costs, fast and free custom samples, and American-made quality is what sets them apart. But for me, I'm most excited about their exhaust evacuation kit. Different modular pieces and their convoluted custom hoses make it so that I can adapt any car, truck, or motorcycle with an internal combustion engine to get those exhaust gases out of my shop so I can keep working in safety and comfort. But beyond just that, they build a variety of hoses for a custom OEM world. You'll see stretchable drain tubing and bellows, as well as agriculture, medical, and military. So again, guys, Crush Proof Tubing Company, crushproof.com, and go down in the description below to see where to get your free samples for industry or your exhaust tubing.